There were some good ingredients there once upon a time. Andrea is personally off to conduct an exit inspection on a house where the tenant owed the landlord substantial rent. First impressions. Always excited to see a mattress on the front lawn amongst heaps of other crap. An array of black rubbish bags, overgrown grass, furniture and crap. I'd like to get in and have a look inside, but at this stage it's going to be a mission to actually even get through the front door. The word feral doesn't explain what I'm seeing at the moment. It's a bad look, but hopefully redemption awaits in the backyard. Oh, lordy. Lately, unexplained phenomena has been seeping through the suburbs like a pestilence. And Prue from Good Girls Property Management has found herself on the front line. Another bloody water cylinder. Some are 10 years old. None are as old as I am. But some are 10 years old. Some are only two or three. It's just appalling. And my job really, being a waitress from the last supper, is to try and find out why. Why is this happening? Today's cylinder saga is in a one bedroom flat occupied by one of Prue's longest standing and most beloved tenants. Bruce, how are you? Good, mate. Good to see you, darling. Good to see you. We're trying to deal with that bloody leak. Oh, mate. mate. Are you over it? Hey. Are you over it? Yep. House was in a mess at some point. <laughs> oh, never. Help is at hand for Bruce today. Prue has already organised plumber Hamish to help Bruce with his unwanted indoor irrigation system. Oh, jeepers, creepers. Here we go again. So, how old is this cylinder? I'd say it's original. So you've had quite a few of these go, have you, Dale? Yeah, heaps. So what's our next move here? We yep, drain so it. Yeah, drain it. Um, yeah. Disconnect the power, drain it. Take all this out. Yeah. Remove the cylinder. Yeah. And get a new one on. Prue, her people, her plumbers, her tenants, her landlords are all so invested in fixing these hot water cylinders, nobody's stopped to ask, why is this happening? But so far, Prue's only seen the tip of the iceberg. After a restless night, Prue's phone starts ringing early. Hello. Hello. With more tenants waking up to the sound of raindrops, not on the roof, in the hot water cupboard. Oh, here it's we go. Oh, it's a that is a big leak. So it's just been dribbling in through there, so all the floor is wet. Who but you can smell it, it's come out to here, and then it's gone right Down up the hallway. into the hallway. Yes. So what we'll probably do in this instance is drill a couple of holes down into the floor because to get a cylinder in this town at the moment is really difficult. I've thought of learning to make them myself because they can't keep up with the demand. The Uruwera Bigfoot, the Wanaka Water Kelpie, the Kaikoura UFOs. Is another unexplained mystery going to be added to the list? Hot water cylinders keep leaking and the calls keep flooding in. Not another cylinder. Oh. In Dunedin, Click Property Manager Andrea's been greeted by an unholy, unsavoury mess at a house recently vacated by an untidy tenant. I'd like to get in and have a look inside, but at this stage it's going to be a mission to actually even get through the front door. But like a mullet haircut, she's hoping the back will look better than the front. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Why me? Oh, God. Oh, that warm stench of summer sun and flies and dirt and rotting things, it's not pleasant. What amazes me is someone has actually gone to the effort of bagging crap. Why couldn't they take it away? Someone obviously likes a good fry up. While the tenant hasn't looked after the property, he has been looking after himself. The recycling bin features three empty bottles of extra virgin olive oil, the expensive stuff. And cage-free eggs. A gourmet with a conscience, but no regard for other people's property. There's a trail of destruction. I'm just 
just going to psych myself up for going inside. Because if it's like this on the outside, God knows what's on the inside. This is really disgusting. Ugh. Andrea's first port of call is a cack covered kitchen. Disgusting. That is one furry half an avocado in a previous life. There were some good ingredients there once upon a time. Maybe mushrooms, pine nuts, broccoli and rice, and avocado. Someone's got a Good expensive eating habit. They say you eat with your eyes. It's a good job this isn't true. Expensive Thai ginger. Artisan Italian cheese. Andrea's in the top 60% of income earners in New Zealand, and even she doesn't eat this well. Crikey, they did spend some money on some food in this joint. Pity they didn't pay their rent. It's pretty clear what's been going on here. Gordon Ramsay hasn't escaped custody. The tenant's rent has simply bypassed the landlord's bank account, so it can be squandered in the specialist supermarket section. There's a nice little collection of mail. Thanks for forwarding it on, people. Facing financial ruin but unwilling to give up his fine dining habits, the tenant has clearly cut expenditure, starting with sing songs in the hall instead of Netflix. Almost original condition, minus a few covers. In the bedroom, the budgeting continues. Mm. Why use paper towels when you've got socks? It's even warmer in here and more pungent. The smells of. Smelly boys and dirty socks. But in the toilet, the tenant's thriftiness has gotten out of control. No toilet duck, no elbow grease, no air freshener. Code brown. I pride myself on a strong stomach. And I'm even testing myself today. On a scale of one to 10, this property would have to be High nine, even a 10 out of 10 for disgusting. One of the worst I have ever had to deal with. I've had to deal with rubbish, but not mold and dirt like this. Yeah, this is pretty up there. While the pounds piled on, the bills piled up. Now the tenant owes $1,000 in unpaid rent, not to mention the cost of the cleanup. It is going to be quite a substantial bill to get this property up to a rentable standard. Worryingly for Andrea, she's only explored half the house. In another room, she finds the final resting place of the derelict mattress currently gracing the front lawn. That is the consequence of someone sleeping on a mattress directly on the floor with no airflow. So the body moisture through the night gets into the mattress, seeps into the carpet, rots the carpet. Four bed legs, four bucks. Being frugal will end up being costly. But Andrea has discovered that while the tenant allowed things to get out of control, he did make some attempts at self-help. Good flat ideas. Good flat ideas. Kitchen recycle bin. Recycle soft plastics. Something about the front door mat inside. Shower, shelf, laundry shelves. It's all very, very faded. Steam, streamlined kitchen, fridge magnets. Is this guy for real? Did he actually live here? Sounds like he's in fairyland. Oh, there's another one, yard work. Top and trim the macrocarpa hedge. Top the holly hedge, cut camellia. Well, they know all the right terms. Mow the lawns, prune the front porch. Aside from the obvious mini hothouse, there's little evidence of yard work or arborist work out here. Do you know what's hilarious? 
the guy that wrote this list, slash tenant, who left the house looking like this, and the outside, actually did yard work for a job, apparently. Alrighty, let's go report to the owner. Tell him the good news. In Christchurch, hot water cylinders are suddenly failing all over the city. Terrible news for landlords and tenants, great news for plumbers who now rushed off their feet. The last six months I've probably done 30 cylinders. It's just me, so there's probably thousands being done. That'll be soaking wet. So let's get that out. In the middle of this miserable mystery is Good Girl's property manager, Prue, who's determined to get to the bottom of it. It's not good enough. Local plumber Stu has conducted some forensic explorations of failed cylinders and identified unusual markings on the inside bottoms. It's, uh, there's copper inside that. That's galvanised with copper inside and there's pinholes in the copper at the bottom and it'll just be dripping away flat out. That a cylinder you would hope would last 20, 30, 40 years, some last 50, 60 years. So, um, of course, the cylinders are going after seven or eight years. So, so there's something there. Pinholes and hot water cylinders do not seem ideal bedfellows. Upon receipt of Stu's remarkable analysis, Prue's gone directly to the hottest hot water cylinder manufacturers around. Superheat is just minutes from Prue's office. Shockingly, Managing Director Trevor knows all about the holes, after having had the finger pointed at him and his company previously. We were accused by the council as mm. manufacturers of making cylinders where the copper was too thin. Yes, I heard and this. the copper was of a poor quality. Yes. That wasn't true. No. So I thought that that was possibly libelous. Yes. So I commissioned a study from the University of Canterbury. Yes. And it showed conclusively that chlorination of the Christchurch drinking water supply resulted in hot water failures. So that's what's at fault. Not poor workmanship, not wafer thin copper, just good old chlorine added to the Christchurch water supply in 2018 in case someone gets a tummy bug. They did no research. No. They talked to no other councils who had similar experience. In the last 12 months, yes. there has been in excess of 8,000 hot water cylinders replaced. 8,000? 8, 8, plus. It all is. at the expense and the cost of the local rate payers. Trevor's identified the pinhole problem, but how does it manifest in layman's terms? In some cases, the chlorine can react with sediment in the water, becoming acidic, drilling tiny little holes in the copper. Result? Leaks. Maybe that tree's been watered with chlorine. Right now, if there's one thing Prue hates more than hot water cylinder leaks, it's navigating local bureaucracy. Whoever's the council rep at the end of this phone call might need a cup of tea and a lie down later on. So it's all going to be very interesting. We did contact the Christchurch City Council. I did speak with the people in charge of water. And the man's response to me was, the water is the water. The water may be the water, but Prue reckons the water ought to be worth the money. I said, if you send me a water rates bill, there'll be a riot. While she waits for the council to move and Antarctica to melt, Prue still has to keep her tenants' heads above water. Tenants like Bruce, the first canary in Prue's coal mine of catastrophe. So we're off to check a cylinder in situ that has actually been replaced. And he's, he's a sweetheart. He's been there for many, many years. G'day, Bruce. G'day, come in, mate. Bruce's replacement hot water cylinder is a sight to behold. It's almost a shame it's hidden away in a cupboard. <laughs> oh, it's very shiny, isn't it? It's lovely. Shiny, new, no leaks. No, no. Loving that. It's got a five-year warranty, made locally. 
look at that. One down, several hundred to go. Okay. Hey, thanks, Bruce. I'll catch you later. All right, darling, you too. I'm going to put on my race and I'm going to put me on a race routine. And while Bruce's only concern now is his gravy to lamb roast portion ratio, Christchurch Council will continue to be getting regular roastings from Prue. See you, Brucey. See you later, mate. Bye, darling. At Click Property Management in Dunedin, property manager Andrea believes she may have turned a corner. The landlords of a property near the university that was universally trashed have turned things around by turning up and tidying up by themselves. I ended up spending practically a week here cleaning this house up. It's a pretty buoyant rental market, um, especially with supply and demand at the moment, so we need to make sure that this property is ready to tenant because we've got people chomping at the bit for properties. Running a ruler over a client's handiwork can be problematic for a professional property manager. Andrea has high standards. I wonder if I'm being led up the garden path today. But in this instance, it oh. appears they've done a great job. No mattress, no rubbish, just acres of neatly trimmed lawn. Today, I'm actually going to go through the front door. Why? Because I can. I can actually physically go through the front door, not like last time I was here. Wow. Hmm, instantly doesn't smell as funky as it did last time either. The lack of piano instantly makes the hallway much wider. But there's clean, then there's click clean. Didn't really come up very well. I knew it wouldn't. I've seen too many carpet stains. The good news is that the brown trout has been removed from the toilet. Code brown's code white. And the kitchen's been restored to its former glory. I can actually see the kitchen bench. I didn't know it looked like that, to be honest. Outside, the good news just keeps on coming. Mm, this is what the deck looks like, too. This was... looked like a garage sale was going to happen on this deck. There were so many little piles of oven trays and frying pans and rubbish bags. The owners have spent a fortune on cleaning, skip hire, labour and gardening, but the house is almost ready to rent. Andrea will organise for the carpet to be replaced before relisting. Perfect. Well, a little bit of cleaning, just carpet cleaning, bit of dusting. We're just about ready to rent. This is a massive improvement on the last time I was here.